Hi, it's Cindy. Um, I just wanted to share with everybody how we built this uh, DIY spray booth for uh, spraying pottery. My husband John designed it and built it. So he's going to narrate for you during the slideshow and uh, tell you how we did it and maybe you can build one for you too. We started off with a commercially available utility sink from Home Depot. It's about $40 to $50 secured the legs with sheet metal screws you really want to do this otherwise the legs will be falling off while you're moving it around and that's not good the top of the spray booth is made out of expanded PVC foam board quarter inch thick it comes in four by eight sheets you can find this usually at your local plastics dealer or sign shop it's actually used to make signs they can print right on the material um, I bought two 4x8 sheets. They're about $70 a sheet. You might be able to find it cheaper if you live in a larger city. Uh, the material is really easy to work with. It cuts with almost anything. You can use a uh, hand saw or in my case I used a little handheld circular saw, battery operated circular saw. Cut out all the main pieces of the of the spray booth and my goal was to make a completely enclosed box and then cut the openings for the front and the bottom. The material glues together with synacrylate. This is like model airplane glue or better known as crazy glue. Uh, synacrylate is the, is the commercial term for it. Um, you can get this at any hobby store that sells uh, model airplanes or radio controlled airplanes. Next step is to tape pieces together as tightly as you can. Uh, if you cut, use the circular saw to cut it out, be sure to sand the rough edges off. Because you, the goal of this is to make it airtight, and a nice smooth surface helps the crazy or the snacrolate glue the pieces together really well. If you've never used this material or this glue before, uh, be very careful. Instant glue, it's thin, it runs everywhere, and it will glue you to the floor or glue your project to the floor. I, I used an old piece of sheetrock that I had to protect my concrete floor and laid down a piece of wax paper underneath the seam as I was gluing it to catch drips. Is this, you, you'll think you have a tight seam. You run this glue over the seam and it'll run right, right through the tightest, tightest joint which is great if you're trying to glue everything, but not so great if drips are falling on the floor. So glue every seam from one end to the other and, and completely enclose your box and then cut out your openings. Uh, I used a router to cut mine out. You can use a hand saw or a circular saw, whatever you choose. Um, I put the radiuses in the corners to you know, I wasn't sure if this material was going to crack or not. Uh, sharp corners tend to cause cracks if you're flexing it a lot, but uh, a little radius will keep that from happening. As you can see here, the, it's starting to come together. I've got the bottom cut out, and the next step was to cut the front out. I left the little flange on the bottom and, and the front on the bottom so I could screw it to the sink, and on the front just to give some rigidity to the sides of the panels because the PVC foam board um, even though it's fairly rigid will still flex on you but if you put a little edge, a corner edge around the front like this uh, this thing will be very sturdy and won't flex at all. I've disregarded the metal frame in this picture. Originally we were going to create the, the floor out of a metal mesh with a welded steel frame Later on we decided to use plastic fluorescent light panels and you'll see that later in the process. Now I attached a fluorescent light to the inside front uh, using rivets and then cut a hole in the top right corner or it could be the top left corner depending whatever is easier for you or where you're building it in your space. This is for the light switch that controls the fan and the light. Here you, here you can see the, the fluorescent light fixture, $15 at Home Depot. And uh, it's a completely enclosed one because I didn't want spray to get into the electrical components. Installed a little electrical box in the hole that I cut for the switch. 
you can see here, and it just mounts with screws. Now the next step is to get the fan installed, and we decided to install our fan in the wall because we didn't want a great big chimney. Now shopping around for fans, uh, there's lots out there, but you want to make sure that you get something at least 1,200 cubic feet per minute to evacuate the air sufficiently out of the spray booth. I found this little fan at Harbor Freight Tools for $70. It has 1,350 cubic feet per minute capacity, which is more than what we needed. And it was nice and compact, inexpensive, and uh, I thought it would be perfect. So I built a, a box to enclose it. And the idea was to keep it all intact so that if I ever had to replace it, I would just open up the box and throw a new one right in there. Uh, it sits on its own feet inside the box. Cut a hole in the wall for the box right next to a stud so it could be attached securely. Installed the box in the wall right up against the the back of the box is actually the siding to the building. And then I secured it with screws from the outside through the siding and also secured it with screws on the inside to, into the stud on one side. And this made made the box very sturdy. Fan fits right inside the box nice and secure. I marked the center on the siding and cut out a circle and lined the inside of the circle facing the fan with foam tape so when the fan goes into the box it just seats right into the foam. It makes a nice tight air, air tight seal. Okay so the next Next uh, thing to do was to cut a little notch in the bottom of the box for the cord to come out. I used my router to do this, make a nice little round notch, fed the cord through there. Then I packed the negative space with insulation. We live in a cold climate and uh, we don't want any heat escaping out of here. Or at least as much heat as we can keep inside the building is a plus. Made some, I made a little door for the uh, front of the fan. This serves two purposes. It closes off the box and also holds the fan securely. The, uh, the flange on the fan just protrudes outside the lid and the lid fits tightly against the, the case of the fan. Uh, I put uh, foam tape on the inside of the radius so that when I push this up there it's, uh, there's not going to be any vibration at all. This fan's mounted in foam front and back and sitting on rubber feet so it's nice and quiet and rattle free. I just secured these two parts to the lid with with uh, sheetrock screws and then we're ready to put the flange on the back of the sink. Um, one of the things I wanted to do is I didn't want to be fighting gravity with my airflow so we're using gravity to not only pull particles down but also the airflow so it's just an added benefit. If your fan was mounted on top you'd be having to pull the you'd have to have a little bit more cubic feet per minute to get the airflow to pull those heavy particles up and out. Um, this way gravity's pulling them down naturally and the airflow themselves. And you see if you do design it like this and use a fan like this that you have more than enough airflow through your through your spray booth. Now the back of the sink is is at an angle so the little flange points to the ground which is not ideal. So I, I drew a plumb line and uh, trimmed the flange back with a Dremel. I could also use uh, sheet metal shears here if you, were, if you wanted to. And uh, the whole idea was to get this uh, spray booth to sit as close to the wall as possible. So I added just a little extra bit of sheet metal here. So here's the finished flange and it uh, fits perfectly right inside of this uh, little fan unit. A little bit of duct tape around it after it's set in place and it's airtight, ready to go. Now one thing I had to do is put levelers on the bottom of the sink because I needed to raise the sink up just a little bit to meet my fan. Even though you measure really good either way, you're never going to quite line up perfectly so you need a little bit of adjustment and these little adjustable feet did the trick. I had to cut a notch out the back of the uh, sink to accommodate the box that the fan sits in. You can see that here. and You can see how close the uh, spray booth sitting to the wall with the fan installed. 
uh, foam tape around the outside edge of the top sink to, so when I set the box on here it's nice and airtight I secured it with little nuts and bolts all the way around and then one thing I was looking at in the bottom of the sink that uh, I was worried about turbulence in the front corners and how the airflow was going to travel in, in to the bottom and out and I wanted to eliminate that I wanted a direct shot at that fan best I could so I took some thinner PVC foam board and it does, this doesn't have to be PVC foam board it could be anything that's uh, flexible um, I just happen to have this PVC foam board ready to go so I, I made a piece that would fit in the bottom of the sink and snap underneath the top edge. I had to cut a curve on each side because the sink is tapered to get this to work. And it's not really important that the edges are extremely airtight. The whole point of this is to give the airflow a nice smooth way to travel to the back of the fan and the bottom of the sink. I ran the electrical out the top and you can see this little ridge in this picture. I just put that there to hide the hide the cord from view from the side. Uh, you don't have to do that. Uh, the, it's just made out of scraps of PVC foam board. Once you start working with this PVC foam board you just want to make everything out of it. So I made the wire connectors, the little little blocks next to the wire that are used zip ties to attach the wire to the outside of the spray booth. And there's the switch all mounted. On the inside, after I had all the wires routed, I built a little box out of PVC foam board to encase the whole switch box. As if anything gets splashed up in there, I don't want any moisture around the wires. Installed a little receptacle on the back leg, just screwed it on there. And so this is, gives a place to attach the cord and the fan plugs into it so that we can operate the fan from the light switch on the front. And there it is, all lit up and fan going and everything works good and it's vibration free. Now to install the bottom. This uh, material is for fluorescent lights, can be found at Home Depot. And uh, it, we put one layer of it in here and it just drops into place sitting on the flange all the way around. And then we uh, put this uh, coarse filter material that we also bought at the local home store. It's a cut yourself uh, filter material and laid that in there and sandwiched it in between two layers of the plastic mesh to make the floor. So there's lots of uh, airflow traveling through here. Here you can see it with a little turntable ready to go. One other thing we used was uh, Artograph makes a filter spray booth filter paper and we bought a 50 foot roll and Cindy lays this down over the top of the mesh and up the back it catches over spray and makes cleanup really easy and still allows good airflow. Another, so it's a two-stage filter in the bottom of this. And that's it. Uh, thank you for watching our little video and hope you have fun making your spray booth. If you have any questions, email us. Happy uh, spray booth making. Thanks, John. You're welcome.